Hello. So yeah, my name is Chelsea and I'm gonna read some poems for you. Um, and I wanted to thank you all for being here. Because uh, it wouldn't be possible to share art without people that are willing to listen to the art. So thank you all for being willing to listen. Um, I feel like the act of listening is kind of underrated but is super important. So thank you all for being here. Okay, this first poem is called How to Exit. Begin by unhooking their names like cat claw from your skin. Listen to the soles of your feet. They know that you are on a bridge made of matchsticks. Do not stand still. Let the friction of each footstep do as it will. Revel in the flames at your back. Give your farewell to those ghosts like Christmas tree skeletons on the side of the road strewn with silver tinsel, pine needles as dry and brittle as your goodbye voice. Even you strain to hear it over the sound of demands that drag behind you like clanging metal cans tied to a cat's tail. The more you walk forward, the louder they rattle. Rethink of it as a string tied around your finger, a reminder of exactly which direction is beckoned by the words, come back. Leave what burns you alive. Your own ashes will not give rise to anyone else's phoenix. Okay. <laughs> so this next poem is in the form of a villanelle and it's titled Turkey Vulture. And I just found out that a few days ago it was International Vulture Awareness Day. So this one is for all of the vultures out there. <clears throat> okay, Turkey Vulture Villanelle. He hovers in the empty sky, black winged, nostrils keen, carcass mouth and reaper eye. Born to eat disease and purify, tender kidney, heart and spleen, he hovers in the empty sky. Spoil spreads until I let it die. His hooked beak extracts and preens, carcass mouth and reaper eye. In the sun, my bones go dry. What rot in me is he foreseen? He hovers in the empty sky. Does the buzz of my tongue speak like flies? Gravekeeper of the desert, called to clean, carcass mouth and reaper eye. He will eat and there will be no cry. I feel the stare of the unseen. He hovers in the empty sky, carcass mouth and reaper eye. This is titled, The Deception of Moths. She is plucking and cutting her wings into a more attractive shape. In the bathroom with scissors and bleach, tweezers and pink razor blades. Slice by slice, she is cutting off minutes of her life, emerging with gorgeous lack, earthbound and crawling along the line of allure. She marvels at the lies moths tell, revels in the likeness of their habits, how they make themselves invisible until they want to be discovered. Like the buff tip moth, who is always in camouflage when sticking to the right backdrop, embodying the color of silver birch tree bark, clinging until even it's unsure of where the body ends and the world starts. Or the death's head hawk moth, who, skull marked and mimicking the scent of bees, climbs in the hive and in perfect masquerade, leaves with a throat full of someone else's honey. Or the luna moth, who, in the cocoon, gives up its mouth and gains eye-spotted wings, emerges, eating nothing and hungering only for a mate. Or the white ermine moth, who uses thanatosis, exposing its underside, crumpling into corpse pose. She too plays dead for survival sometimes. Corpse pose, missionary position, named the manner of serpents by certain tongues. And she dreams of oil black snakes writhing upon her abdomen. She lets the buttons come undone. She has finally been found. Her wings are becoming matted down, pressed into her back as he holds her tight. Her wings are twitching like mammalian paws in sleep 
a phantom limb dream of flight. From the mouth of the cave. I let them climb into me. Sometimes they hang suspended from their ropes, limbs dangling like large fleshy spiders from thread. They like to hear their human sounds echoing, spilling down the hollow, and I feel it. I let them come in if they work hard enough. It feels good to be admired for my stalactites and stalagmites even if they chisel me away to find these. Their iron pickaxes and shovels hurt, yet I whisper, come closer. It is through strike of flint that I spark and I break. It's funny how far they come, how deep they dig for open space, how they are lured by the somethingness of pure lack, silence like its own noise alongside the bat wing, the plinking drop of moisture. Darkness like its own color, disrupted by the headlamp, that tunnel of light manufactured. There are creatures dwelling in me that have never seen the sun, places where God said, let there be light, and his voice bounced off my walls and I spat it out. I keep the pale centipede, phantom cave snail, eyeless spider, translucent and blind beings, they never leave, we eat each other. Um, this is titled The Girl Among the Geese. <clears throat> Once communion wine tried to drown them, the winged things, so I let nothing in, nothing out. Butterflies in my stomach crawled up my throat, crumpled bodies in my closed mouth, yellow wings between my teeth. Then one morning she put them back together, a pasted kite of insect parts, and she flew it. Once, my hometown church baptized me, then spit me out after holding me under their tongues for 20 years. One Sunday, the pastor asked the congregation which bodies do not belong. A voting pebble was placed in each palm to be dropped into one of two urns, as if to say, it is the weight behind this veiled hatred that measures the nature of sin. Each small plunk of each pebble of judgment, a more civilized form of stoning. Once in a meadow I stood, a girl among the geese, body tired of being so full of apology. I tore my soul into several pieces and fed it to the geese like breadcrumbs. Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Now I thought, maybe I'll know what it feels like to fly. And this is my last poem, and it's called Litany of Lovers and Weather. Of course we are storms, passing through the landscapes of one another. How else would that bottle have turned to glass shards, triangular and scattered like shining confetti? How else would those sheets have become soaked through from the salt and water of the sweat of the body or deliverance from black rain clouds? How else would that drywall have borne holes, debris white as knuckle bone? Or consider the creation of crow's feet on flightless faces and worry lines of furrowed brows deepening with repetition, etched like washes in the desert. Of course we are storms and landscapes. How else would the blood of others have come down on me in droplets, like the storms that have lifted up, then torn apart, frogs and catfish carried their remains through the air like a funeral procession? How else would old birthday cards have ended up in the trash can? Or like the storm they say poured out, periwinkle and hermit crabs, the consciousness of someone else, fragmented, shaken, raining down. The dawn after the storm has passed, these memories litter the land, hanging exposed, raw broken nerves, the snapped branches, the fallen trees, the puddles that gather and cling, the clouds that fade like old bruises, the dark wet tint of roof tiles and pavement, dampened as if with watercolors, and most of all, the soggy earthworms who emerge, lengthening their pallid bodies, 
murmuring yes, we have smelled death, and we've eaten it. You can name us resurrection. Okay, thank you.